everybody, this is Tofikr, and so when was the first time you ever heard about the Fifty Shades of Grey books or films? For me, it was about six or seven months before the opening of the first movie. And, uh, you know, I had a colleague who asked me what I thought about Jamie Dornan, and I asked, who is Jamie Dornan? I have no idea who he is or, you know, what he looks like or anything like that. She, you know, was uh, curious because, you know, she knew that I knew a lot about films and she thought he was very cute and she thought that he was exactly the right person to play Christian Grey. Then I asked her, what's Fifty Shades of Grey? And she looked at me like I was stupid or something like that. She then informed me that this was a bunch of books that was sort of Twilight fan fiction written by, you know, a Twilight fan, but adding more sex and BDSM and risky stuff and, you know, stuff like that. And then I found out that apparently this was even worse than Twilight. This was, according to some, some of the worst things that has ever been written by a human being, you know, under the pretense of, you know, writing a book. But the question is, is Fifty Shades of Grey actually that terrible? That is what we're gonna find out today. This is Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh dear. Is it a coincidence that both the Twilight franchise and the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise all takes place in Washington State? But unlike its vampire counterpart, this one doesn't take place in the small town of Forks, but takes place in the much larger city of Seattle, where Anastasia Steele. It is difficult to say that thing, you know, with a straight face. It is one of the dumbest names in movie history, alongside Cypher Rage from uh, After Earth with Will Smith. Ah, Cypher Rage, the memories we do have of you. Anyway, so Anastasia Steele is going to fill in for a friend who got sick or something like that because she's going to interview this billionaire who is this super successful, kind of reclusive person called Christian Grey. And the second she shows up, he is totally smitten by her. Why? I have absolutely no idea. She has absolutely no personality, she has no charisma, and she's a reasonably attractive woman, maybe a seven or something like that, but come on! She's about as bland as you can get, but for some reason, she's the one Christian Grey decides, and he starts to court her and stuff like that, but he makes it very clear from the beginning that this is not going to be a, you know, romantic relationship with, you know, chocolate and flowers and stuff like that, because he is not into love, he is into fucking. And he fucks hard, because he has this game room, you see, and the game room isn't filled with board games and Playstations, Xbox and stuff like that. Instead it is filled with whips and chains and shackles and butt plugs and masks and various other, you know, hardcore sex palavas and stuff like that. And she's of course, you know, not really into this because she's a virgin, which makes him go, Ooh, you're a virgin! And then he says, okay then, by the way, here is your contract for becoming my very pampered sex slave. And uh, I was like, uh, what? Come again? So the rest of the movie is basically them having an on and off relationship and bitching and moaning and, you know, contracts, no fisting and stuff like that. And um, having just the most generic and tame and vanilla sex you've ever seen, barely earning this movie an R rating. And they barely use anything from the game room, oh dear. <sighs> so where do we begin with this? Okay, so Christian Grey is a stalker and a sociopath and perhaps also a serial killer. There are so many red flags surrounding him that nobody should enter any kind of relationship with this man because he's fucking insane. She is also batshit insane and has no will and no personality. And he's about as bland as having one white bread on top of another white bread. And to top it all off, they have almost non-existing chemistry together. We're talking uh, Padme and Anakin levels of bad chemistry together. And I would have believed them more as siblings rather than lovers. And the bad chemistry also makes the few sex scenes we have feel cold and distant, which is not the thing I suppose this movie was supposed to have. But here is the real problem that this movie has. This is smut. This is stupid, badly written smut. And if they would have released it as a badly written smut, this movie could have almost maybe worked because it would have been unintentionally funny. But now they're trying to make this 
dignified somehow by having, you know, very nice cinematography. A pretty damn good soundtrack from Danny Elfman. And actually, Jamie Dornan and Dakota Canning is actually trying to make these stupid lines actually work. And because they do that, this movie doesn't work. It is like trying to polish a turd. I also discovered in the years that followed the release of this movie that one of the reasons why this movie doesn't work is the fact that she used to have in the books a lot of weird, you know, inner monologues that, you know, her inner goddess was exploding and, you know, stupid shit like that. If they would have, you know, kept those inner monologues that is unintentionally hilarious, maybe this movie would have worked. Now it just feels insane because we don't understand what she's thinking. What are you thinking? We're thinking. And apart from, you know, our two main characters, we have virtually no other characters to attach ourselves to. So we are stuck here with these two knuckleheads for the entirety of the entire movie, where absolutely nothing happens, where Christian Grey just acts like either a stalker or a cult leader of some kind, you know. Christian Grey teases, you know, that they're going to have a relationship and then he just, you know, shuts her out and then, you know, comes back with, you know, gifts and helicopter rides and stuff like that. And it's just disturbing to see when he, you know, slowly, you know, manipulating and breaking her, you know, spirit and stuff like that, essentially. It's not what the movie is supposed to be, but that's just the vibe I got. And it is an uncomfortable watch when you're thinking about it. So the movie is horrendously badly written. The acting is subpar, but it's not as bad as it would get, you know, in time. And the characters are impossible to care about and the love story between them is disturbing as hell and uh, to top it all off it is just so fucking boring with all the contract signings and the stalkings and the gifts and the helicopter rides and all that shit there is really nothing happening here this is a movie almost devoid of all types of drama and intrigue and story this is a movie almost completely without redeeming qualities. But Jamie and Dakota, they really try. They really try to make these stupid lines sound kind of plausible at least, even though it doesn't really work. Now the question is, how would you make this movie into a movie that would actually work? And I don't know. Maybe this movie should have been made as an unintentional comedy, or maybe we should have just replaced uh, Dakota Johnson with Anna Kendrick and made this into an NC-17 movie. Then I would have given this movie a much better rating. But um, should you see this movie? Absolutely not. To be fair, I prefer Twilight to Fifty Shades of Grey because at least Twilight has a story. At least it has a couple of characters I do care about. This has absolutely nothing. It is just a boring, tedious, softcore porn without any porn in it, really. This is absolutely nothing. Fifty Shades of Grey is a quite terrible movie, but not quite as bad as the sequel Fifty Shades Darker. That isn't even a well-made movie. This one has at least some decent cinematography to itself, and they haven't totally jumped the shark at this point. I give Fifty Shades of Grey 11 points. It might be too generous, but considering how awful the sequel is, it cannot get any lower in my opinion. This is a boring erotic drama with barely anything erotic inside of it. We have maybe 20 minutes of plot stretched out to the freaking horizon. And also, it's a bad sign when Bella and Edwards seem to have a more healthy relationship than these two knuckleheads. Jesus Christ. So I'll see you next time from Well So and So Reviewing. Well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.